It's now time for the Southern League Cavaliers Coaches Show with head coach Michael McClure. We now take you to Mike Fowler, your host for tonight's program. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Southern League Cavalier Football and the Mike McClure Coaches Show. I'm Mike Fowler. I'll be your host as we talk Cavalier football and visit with Cavalier coach Mike McClure. I want to thank our sponsors for helping bring you our show each Tuesday night at 7.30 on 105.5 FM WFJA. Wilkerson Chevrolet, Domino's, Sheriff Tracy Carter, Kendale Pawn Shop, Farm Bureau of Tramway, and Jones Printing Company. Coaches Show Sponsors, Wilkinson Chevrolet, Domino's, Sheriff Tracy Carter, Kendall Pawn Shop, Farm Bureau Tramway, Jones Printing Company, Brick Capital Video, WFJA Sports FM 105.5. Tonight's show will be rebroadcast at 6 o'clock this Friday night prior to our 7 o'clock game on 95.1 FM and 1050 AM WWGP. Video of our coaches' show will be posted on the WFGA Facebook page each Wednesday by noon. I look forward to talking with Cavalier coach Mike McClure tonight and bringing you exciting Southern League Cavalier football. We're going to take a short break and hear from our great sponsors. We'll be right back with Coach Mike McClure right after these messages. Welcome back to the Coach Mike McClure Show. And, Coach, welcome back into the booth and appreciate you coming in again after a, a week one uh, game we had. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me, as always. No problem. So, Cavs opened the season last week and uh, unfortunately went down to Westover and came out on the short end 27-3 uh, to at Westover. But it was a game that, um, you know, we started off in a good good spot. You know, mm -hmm. we started off in a good spot. Um had them held them three and out to start the game. We got the ball, couldn't move the ball a little bit, but uh, the freshman kicker we talked a little bit about last night. That once again the third generation kicker, yeah. uh, Brian McCollum comes in and kicks a 36 yard field goal, and you're off three nothing um, mm -hmm. after the first series. So it must have been feeling pretty good at that point. Yeah, we definitely were. We we felt like we was in a position, you know, to control the game and and to um, go on top and just to keep scoring. Um, you know, defense was feeling confidence out of going out and getting three and stop uh, three and out. And um, you know they fumbled the fumbled the, the the kick that they tried to um, the punt that they tried to kick, mm -hmm. and so you know we we were confident, but you know just over time and just um, the heat and then guys playing both ways, and um, as we and you were talking about a little bit, defense you know play a lot of snaps and just begin to wear down, and, and that's where you know if they begin to just. Just kind of pound us a little. Yeah, and you know the game. Even though we, we ended up losing the game, but um, and uh, first half was was kind of a back and forth battle. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, people, the kids are trying to fill each other out on both teams. And and we held Westover to a to a six points uh, in the second quarters when they finally scored. Mm -hmm. So it was six to three at halftime, and you had to be feeling pretty decent about that. But one of the things, you know, obviously when we, we talked chatted about too, is um, second half of play, just the offense really struggled to move the ball consistently on Friday night. Yeah, that you know that that was something that we you know kind of struggled with last year as well. Um, but I won't put all the blame on the offense. We didn't do our part on defensively to get off the field, you know, and put them in third third and long situations or fourth down situations to, that forced them to punt. Or if they did, were in a third down situation and third and long, um, you know, they were able to get into fourth and one or even get pick up the first down. So that didn't help us at all but um you know we talked about just playing team football and um you know complementary football mm -hmm. the offense having defense back and defense having offense back um to where we're playing more of a balanced game mm -hmm. but you know there was there was several bright spots in there too and, and we talked about you're playing with the young team pretty much uh, a lot of young starters on both sides of the ball. Um, but I think for the most part, offensive line did a pretty good job uh, mm -hmm. during the night. They got tired, worn down a little bit. Um, Westover had some good size on their yeah. offensive line. Yeah. And uh, I know that later in that second half, like you were talking about, they were able to, to run the ball a little bit against us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, offensive line, you know, they they done well. Um, our young guys really stepped up. You know, our two mm -hmm. two young guards that we had and, and Marcus at center really stepped up. 
Um, you know, so it, it was some bright spots. You know, it always seems bad or, or, or mm-hmm. not as good in sure. the moment until you really go back and cut on the film. And then that's when you realize you were one player away, you know, so one person away from doing what they were supposed to do. And, right. And the play could have either went with either way. And that's uh, speaking offensively and defensively. Mm-hmm. And, and Josh Stone making the switch over from wide receiver to quarterback. Uh, struggled a little bit in his first game, mm-hmm. but I, I saw some positives there. He was throwing a pretty good ball. Mm-hmm. You know, some of the passes were off a little bit, but that comes with, you know, just getting experience. Yeah. And uh, what are your impressions of how Josh did? Well, I, I feel like he handled it well. I mean, coming in his first time and actually having a true rush mm-hmm. in his face, you mm-hmm. know, uh, people in his face, and he's trying to, you know, Maneuver and try to make things happen with with his arm, you know that's that's big. So you know we, we us as coaches going to put him in some better spots to do what he does best, mm-hmm. um, moving forward and and um, you know just so he can be a, a fact uh, a big factor for for us. At yeah, quarterback. I, I I thought it was um I, yeah I thought that was some good things to see and uh, again I mean everybody um one thing that I noticed with your team in the springtime is that you know, nobody quits out there. Mm-hmm. They, they play the whole game, and it was hot. I mean, I was yeah. telling you, we were in the press box, and it was hot and steamy up there, so I couldn't imagine how it was down there on the field. Um, and, and, again, we, we, we mentioned, you know, you know you got a kicking game, a decent mm-hmm. kicking game, so uh, that was something that we uh, were able to get and get him that experience as well. So um, anybody injured? I didn't see, a couple of people came off, but I noticed, I think it was, um, I believe it was um, Jeremiah Freeman that had come mm-hmm. off early. But they came back in the game. Is everybody yeah. okay? Yeah, everybody's healthy. Most of most of the guys really just was cramping up, mm-hmm. um, you know, on the sideline doing doing those times that they were going down. Right. Or, um, you know, and, and we try to we practice during the time of game time just so they'd be more acclimated to the weather and to mm-hmm. the heat and everything. But you know, it comes back to just drinking water sure. and taking care of your body outside of practice as well. That's very which true. We have to do a better job at, at getting our guys to do to. Um, to make sure that they're able to go all four quarters. No, exactly. That was one of the things that Austin and I noticed when you guys were warming up. You were mm-hmm. smart having those guys over in the shade as yeah. much as possible uh, during the pregame. So, um, and I got to hand it, they debuted. This is the new helmet, of course. This year, we talked about it during the broadcast and debuted the new uniforms on the road. They look pretty sharp. So, looking forward to seeing the the final one as well. Um, let's take a, a quick. Uh, we talked about this last week. We're going to do meet the Cavs. Just a few quick words um, on our linebackers. Um, linebackers, and especially a couple of the guys we got who have some experience um, are the quarterback of the defense basically mm-hmm. um, and you got guys that started last week you got senior John Wilson uh, senior Trenton Johnson the freshman Mike Tate Blanks which we'll talk a little bit more later and a senior Nasir Blue and uh, these guys along with some others are guys that just run all over the field mm-hmm. well you know you got John Wilson who's uh, he's been around for a while mm-hmm. um, he's he's one of the true guys who's played varsity football you know the longest and so we look for him to take charge of the defense and 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 to really run the, the linebacking core and he's and he's done that um he's done everything you know we've asked him to do in terms of that position and um you know Trent Johnson stepping into a role that he really wasn't into in um last year so mm-hmm. you know trying to get more out of him as well at linebacker and Nasir Blue just trying to get him to pick up where he left off at yeah. um you know last season and then of course we got Mike the freshman coming in and um you know I think he had a great debut um, yeah and Friday night so. great yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how those guys play throughout the year and with John's leadership. I think that's going to be great. So let's take a quick look at the Sand Hills 3A, 4A conference results from week one. Uh, it was, of course, Southern League going down at Westover 27 to 3. Lee County 62, Northwood 0. Scotland County 52, Northern Durham 0. Richmond County 51, Mount Tabor 41. Pinecrest 40, Roseville 36. Hope County 40, Grace Creek 0. And, of course, the Union Pines game was canceled from last week. Uh, this week in the Sand Hills 3A, 4A, we just got word Overhills is not able to play. So Winston-Salem Glen, a uh, team that I believe is ranked number 6 in the state in 4A, will be at Lee County this week. Of course, uh, the Cavaliers will be hosting at Cavalier State in the season opener against Green Hope, and that's a 7 o'clock kickoff. Union Pines at Grace Creek. Anson County at Pinecrest, Richmond County at Butler, Hoggard at Scotland County, and Hope County at Lomerton. Those are your Sand Hills 3A, 4A games this week. And we're going to go take another quick break to hear from our great sponsors. We'll be right back right after these messages. Welcome back to the Coach Mike McClure Show. 
And it's this time um, after each and every game that we're going to take the time to announce our players of the game for the previous week. So for week one at Westover, we have two different types of awards we give out. Of course, the Norman Financial Group uh, players of the game are chosen by myself and my color commentator, Austin Thomas, um, during the game and at the end of the broadcast. Uh, and, of course, we have the other one that talks about this trophy, sponsored by Wilkinson Chevrolet. Um, this trophy will be given out to uh, the Coach McClure and Wilkinson Chevrolet player of the game each week. And the names will be engraved on the trophy. And at the end of this season, the trophy will go back to Southern Lee and go in the trophy case. Uh, and it's a pretty nice trophy. We talked about it last week's show uh, that Coach was able to take it to the banquet for the spring season and had a picture with all the winners. So we'll plan on doing that again this, this coming year as well. So let's talk a little bit about the Norman Financial Group, WWGP, Offensive player of the game, and, and we talked. We, you know, we really kind of had some struggles on, on offense Friday night, but um, we we really didn't have much of a choice. We wanted to do this because uh, we talked about them a lot in the first show we did. We saw him at the scrimmage, saw his dad, and and uh, um, he came out first kick he ever had at Southern Lee, first mm-hmm. experience, and knocked a 36-yard field goal to give us the points. And so our uh, WWGP Norman Financial Group offensive player of the game this week is Brian McCollum. Yeah, I uh, felt, you know, he was deserving of this award, you know, this this week. Um, like you say, he came out, put our only points up on the board for us this week and, um, you know, showed he was calm and, and collective as he kicked it. And, um, you know, he's really a weapon. So, you know, really what I was telling the uh, offensive coordinator was, just, you know, just understand we can get in field goal range mm-hmm. and, and, um, and we can get points on the board because – um, it, it really makes a difference when you have a kicker that can kick field goals, you know, from from a far uh, far distance. You know, right. you don't have to be, you know, within the twenty mm-hmm. and or so. And so Brian does that for us. Um, he he's able to get points on the board for us when we're not um, really in, in in touchdown scoring mm-hmm. position, um, as well as uh, kickoffs. You know, touchbacks yeah. are 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 important and, and big parts of the game if we can get a touchback or if we can get the ball to bounce within the you know mm-hmm. the 10 or 5 and roll around back there then that's great field position for our defense to start at so you know having somebody like Brian on the team is, is really a, a um you know, a big deal and a blessing. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how he does. You know, obviously he's just a freshman, so we'll see how he does uh, the rest of the year and the rest of his career here at Southern Lee. And on the defensive side of the ball, we had a couple guys we could have picked for this award. Um, and as the WWGP Norman Financial Group uh, defensive player of the year, we went with Reggie Butler, uh, the sophomore uh, cornerback that we had, and Reggie had a pretty decent night. He he forced a fumble. He had two passes defended, uh, made a couple tackles, and and we were watching him. I was watching him cover some of those receivers they mm-hmm. had, and he was staying right in her face on a lot of things. So we went ahead and went with Reggie Butler. So what are some of the things now that Reggie's coming off his freshman year in the spring? What are you seeing that Reggie's been doing for Reggie's, you guys? Reggie's uh, um, he's going to be a great player, and he's going to keep getting better each year. I'm mm-hmm. I'm excited to see Reggie's senior year because um, he just keeps getting confidence mm-hmm. like if you if you saw Reggie last year and then now you see Reggie now Reggie feels that he can guard anybody mm-hmm. and, and that's what you need you know you need that type of corner that where you can say hey Reggie just shut down this side of the field mm-hmm. um and, and he'll go do it and and he's smart he understands what he's supposed to do he understands his assignment um his alignment and he you know he's just focuses on tech on his technique and, and keep getting better Oh, man, and he's not big, but he's a feisty player. Yeah. So you know that's what makes him. You know, uh, um, you know he's going he's going to be a dominant and rough. Yeah. Well, congratulations to Reggie Butler on being our Norman Financial Group and WWGP Defensive Player of the, of the Game uh, last week against Westover. And finally, uh, again, Wilkinson Chevrolet, uh, proud to sponsor the Wilkinson Chevrolet and Coach McClure Player of the Game for Westover. And Coach, I'll let you go ahead and announce who the, this week's winner was. Uh, this week winner, we have Michael Tate Blanks, um, freshman inside linebacker, um, played in his first varsity game this week. End up, uh, like I said, I think he had a great game. Um, even though we lost, he, he had eight tackles, one tackle for a loss, one forced fumble, uh, one sack, uh, one and one fumble recovery. So, you know, he got all that in, in, in his first varsity football game. Excited to see, you know, how he continues to progress. Um, and, you know, he, he'll only get bigger and, mm-hmm. and faster and stronger as time goes on. But excited to see how he um, how he um, comes out this Friday against Green Hope. 
No, that's great. And congratulations to Michael Tate Blanks. All three of these players will receive a certificate um, as well as Michael gets a, a gift certificate as well. And, of course, he'll have his name engraved. He'll be the first name on the new trophy uh, going into the uh, Southern League trophy case uh, later this year. And uh, so right now, at least for one week, um, Michael's got the bragging rights among the brothers. Yeah, he does. We have three three blanks brothers on the team this year. Yeah, he can he can he got a little something extra to talk about at home. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations to him. All right, so this week um, we go into our home opener. Um, and before I forget, real quick, um, are they still having to go online to get tickets to come mm-hmm. to the game? Yes, tickets will still be sold online. If you do not uh, purchase a ticket uh, prior to the game, we will have. Uh, posters up and signs up with QR codes on them that you can scan. It will take you directly to the link uh, to buy the, to buy the purchase the ticket for, for that Friday. So don't feel like you have to have it prior to getting to at the gate. You can just use your phone, scan the code, and you can purchase at the gate. Great. Oh, that's good to know. So, yes, um, so this week we do take on Green Hope, the Falcons from Green Hope out of Cary. Uh, they're coming in at uh, 1-0. They took down Broughton last week, 24-17. to They're members of the 4A East Conference 29 with all these changes. Um, and uh, they finished the spring season we had at 4-2. and They lost in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, back at the last full season we had in 2019, they were 7-4. and four, But we don't have any history against Green Hope. Matter of fact, I was looking at their past history against teams, and the last local team that they played was Lee County. I was way back in 2012. So what can we expect from the Falcons as you get ready for them this week? Well, we know they want to come out uh, offensively and run, run a triple, uh, you know, run a triple option. That's what they mm-hmm. like to run. Um, got a pretty good running back who runs it well, quarterback who runs it well. Um, defensively, um, they're similar to us defensively, running a three-three. Mm-hmm. Um, they were well, actually they run more of a three-four look defensively, um, but they're well disciplined. You know, they're well disciplined, and anytime you run the option, you have to be well disciplined whenever you're playing against them mm-hmm. defensively. So that's what we're just trying to focus on. Um, you know, hoping that uh, you know they actually had to finish their game last night. So, um, okay. yeah, they actually had to finish their game last night. So we're hoping that kind of plays a factor with them uh, and coming in and playing us on Friday. Yeah, be a little yeah. tired. Yeah, just a little bit. Exactly, so. exactly. So obviously, and, and like you said, everybody's pretty much healthy going into our game this week mm-hmm. from our side. Yeah, everybody's just healthy on four. Keep us. them hydrated. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's the biggest thing, man. Start getting fluids in them around Wednesday, tomorrow, and yeah. right through all the way through Friday. Yeah, because it's going to be another warm night. But please come out support these Cavaliers. Uh, as they have their home opener at Cavalier Stadium. Kickoff is at 7 o'clock. And we'll, we'll take another timeout right now to hear from our sponsors. We'll be back with Coach McClure right after these messages. Welcome back, and we hope you would have enjoyed listening to the Mike McClure Coaches Show. Coach, again, thanks for coming in taking the time. I know it's a busy time, especially with school getting started. Yeah. And uh, second day of school today, right? Yep, second day yeah. of school. But uh, like school. you said, this man had to do virtual open house before he came <laughs> in here. So, uh, well, good luck with school um, and uh, the whole thing, and good luck this week no uh, against Green Hope. Thank you. We remind you to join us each Tuesday at 7.30 on 105.5 FM WFJA and every Friday night prior to our games at 6 o'clock or 6.30 at 95.1 FM and 10.50 AM WWGP. Our coaches show is also posted on the WFJA website and Facebook page each Wednesday by noon, and we are glad you have taken these opportunities to join us this season for Cavalier football. We also remind you to check out the WFJA website. Go to sports then high school football, and you'll see a choice of pages to include our results page with complete game articles posted by midnight after each game, the conference standings, power rankings, schedules for all the teams in the Sand Hills 3A, and up-to-date season stats for the Southern League Cavaliers. Good luck to the Cavaliers this week as they host Green Hope in the Cavaliers' home opener at Cavaliers Stadium Friday night with a 7 o'clock kickoff. We thank all our sponsors for bringing you our show tonight. Wilkinson Chevrolet, Domino's, Sheriff Tracy Carter, Farm Bureau of Tramway, Kendale Pawn Shop, and Jones Printing Company. Coaches Show Sponsors, Wilkinson Chevrolet, Domino's, Sheriff Tracy Carter, Kendale Pawn Shop, Farm Bureau Tramway, Jones Printing Company, Brick Capital Video, WFJA Sports FM 105.5. And we thank you for listening to WFJA and WWGP Sports. Good night, everyone. Go Cavs! 
You've been listening to the Southern Lee Cavalier Coaches Show with head coach Mike McClure and show host Mike Fowler. On behalf of all Coaches Show sponsors, we thank you for listening to tonight's program. This has been a production of WFJA and WWGP Sports.